Hi, this is Kimball Bullington. This is, is an example of creating a failure modes and effects analysis uh, for a project. And I'm using my Bike Across America plan uh, as my project, but in this analysis I'm actually going to look at uh, the actual risk of the trip in bicycling across America. So um, that's part of the planning is to look at in my case, to look at the risk of the actual trip to see if that, those are uh, acceptable risks and what we can plan to reduce the risk for the actual trip. Um, so I've started with this template that, uh, that you're given. I've actually already uh, doctored it up a little bit. Um, I always want templates to not look like templates when I'm through. Templates are there to save me time and to make me look good. Uh, I don't really want to make someone else look good, so I'm going to I'm going to uh, highlight um, these rows here at the top. I've already done this some, but I'm going to show you. A uh, right click and delete and delete the entire rows, and so they just they just disappear. They're gone, and now this has a lot less of a template look. Uh, if you're starting from the same ASQ template, you may also have to click on a uh, the logo and delete uh, delete the logo. I went in and and um, changed all of the um, uh, this header information and and made it customized to me. And I'll start just filling out the process. How do you how do you do this? And you might start. Sometimes it's easier to start with the effect um, and sort of work um, backwards. Uh, so, for instance, I could um, uh, have a wreck. Uh, what could cause me to have a wreck? And it could be um, that I am, um, um, I'm going to use a sort of a technical term here, a boink. <laughs> Basically means that I have a physical failure. Um, that I uh, low blood sugar, uh, dehydration, uh, something like that. In this case, I'm going to say it's fueling. Uh, maybe running into uh, consuming 5,000 calories a day, 6,000 calories a day in some cases, and and so I may just run out of uh, actually run out of fuel, and um, and so could could have a, a, a health issue there. Uh, that a wreck would certainly be a really um, a bad uh, a high severity. It would be a bad event to have a wreck. Uh, causes of this is um, it didn't drink enough or oh, sorry didn't eat enough didn't eat enough calories or, or drink slash eat. Um, enough. And occurrence. How likely is this to occur? Well actually I could see this occurring. Uh, if you're not careful it will occur. I'm going to put this sort of right in the middle. Say this is a 5 of occurrence. So um, in these numbers the, the bad numbers are, are big and, the, and, the, and if you have a low risk it's the, the numbers are low. So um, we're, we're using a 1 to 10 scale here. That's what I've chosen to use. And so I'm saying that's sort of right in the middle. Um, what are my current process controls? Um, breakfast, lunch, snacks. You know, I just try to do that um, during the day. And um, uh, uh, detection. So this means Will I recognize this is happening in, in time to do something about it? And if you're very likely to detect it, that's a low number. Uh, that means your risk is lower. If you're not likely to detect it, it's a higher number. And so I'm going to say this is a 4. Uh, we're somewhat subjective here. And my RPM, my risk priority number, is, is just the product of the severity, how bad it is, the occurrence, how likely it is to happen, and the detection. How likely am I to see it and avoid, be able to take action to avoid it? Now, I'm going to pause here for a moment and I'm going to fill in some of the other data before we proceed. 
All right, so I've completed, um, or at least uh, added some um, uh, causes and uh, failure modes to our, our plan here. And uh, you see as I scroll down, we have different um, uh, process functions, fueling, maintaining, hydrating, navigating. Where did I, where did I come up with these? I mean, you could just, just sort of brainstorm them, but I had already gone through that exercise with um, uh, a uh, cause and effect diagram. So here's my cause and effect diagram. And under processes, you see all these different processes. And so I looked at the processes that I thought would be most likely to cause a failure of some sort on the, on the trip. And then, um, and then I used those processes uh, as my process function. Then thought, well, how can they fail? and um, have listed these. And I'll, I'll provide this file to you so you can go and look at it, at it if, see if it makes more sense. And they have different levels of, of severity. You know, I've got uh, riding hit by a car. If you're going to take off and ride across America and not think about getting hit by a car, um, you, you haven't thought it through yet. Um, so that's a, that's a possibility. Not not highly likely, but um, uh, not outside the poss uh, realm of possibility. And that brings us to um, uh, a column that I left in here that I, I, I sometimes delete. And, and that is this class. And, and there's all kinds of ways that we can classify failures. But I could call, uh, decide to classify failures that are um, injury or death as uh, a different class from ones that just cause me inconvenience in some way or another, or even the failure of the whole mission. Um, I'd still rather not get hurt. And so you might put some numbers in here classifying the different failure modes, and then that gives you another way to sort them, even if the numbers, the RPN numbers, the risk priority numbers, don't come out uh, in a way that, that's going to raise them to your attention. In this case, however, I'm just going to simplify and what most of you would do, uh, I'm sorry, didn't mean to insert here. I'm going to delete uh, just that whole, whole column and say, well, I don't really need that. Again, customize the template to you. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to highlight uh, all of these and, um, and sort. So I'll go up here to data, sort, and I'm going to sort by um, column J in, in mine, in my spreadsheet, and now column J, and sort from largest to smallest. I say OK. And now my, oops, I, I didn't have everything highlighted. Sorry about that. So let's do that again. And um, uh, data sort. And now we have it sorted in decreasing risk priority uh, number, which are essentially putting the riskiest issues at the top. Now there's one more. Uh, we're not done yet because we haven't taken any action. And we definitely want to take action on the highest risk items. I'm going to pause it, take some action, and then come back. All right, so I've added now some uh, recommended actions to each one of the, the uh, failure modes we identified previously. I want to say if you have a really low risk number then maybe you don't um, address every single issue. You certainly want to address the, the worst issues, uh, the riskiest issues first. And so uh, for my hydrating, which is at the top of my list, I said I'm going to add more uh, water bottles, three total, uh, so I can carry more water with me uh, when I'm going. So if I dehydrate and wreck, the severity is still the same, but I'm just not as likely to do it. So the, the occurrence has gone down while the detection and the severity have stayed the same. You'll see that's a, that's a trend uh, pretty often through here that will change the, um, the likelihood of occurrence. Now, in the flat tire and stranded, uh, I actually changed and said I'm going to carry a CO2 pump as well as a hand pump, so I'm less likely to get stranded, uh, perhaps, with a, um, with a flat tire. Oh, but even if I do have the flat tire, 
um, I'm, I'm, the result is not likely to be stranded. It's likely to just be delayed. And so I've actually changed the severity from 6 to 3 and, and, and did that uh, throughout um, the uh, failure modes and effects analysis. Is, is this enough? I don't know. Uh, if I actually make this trip, I will probably expand the failure modes and effects analysis and, 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 and try to think about it some more. Like, like many of my tools in project management, I like to let them sit for a while and, uh, and then come back to them. And I'll do the same thing for this. So I'll upload this file and you can look in more detail at, at what I did. There is a possibility, um, I want to note two more issues real quickly. There is a possibility that you, you don't know what to do. You know that you should do something, but you don't know what to do. Then in that case, leave the recommended action blank and uh, leave your severity, occurrence, and detection the same as it was originally. So that those, that'll uh, sort of jump out at you as a, as a high uh, risk priority number. Another, uh, you see over here, I have taken some actions and I note those, uh, but in most cases uh, I haven't taken any actions yet and so I'll leave that blank. So that tells me here what I plan to do, but leaving the action blank says you still need to do it. All right, that's an example of failure modes and effects analysis and um, hope this is helpful to you. Thank you.